Right, so I'm in Manchester today and I'm on the back end of Manchester in the old, old part. It's more or less the uh, Ardwick area and the face of this place hasn't probably changed for at least 100 years. So it's a good thing in a way because we can sort of get a good picture of the two stories that I'm going to uncover today. Now, you've got Manchester Piccadilly over here and the old Mayfield stations over here and I'm at the back of that and we're going to uncover two gruesome, gruesome stories. And the first one is um, of, it was dubbed Manchester's Jack the Ripper uh, murder case. And it was in the wake of the Ripper in London, Jack the Ripper in London. It was sort of a few years after that. So it was in the wake of it basically. And it happened just through this archway here on Hoyle Street. So without further ado, let's go over there now. Right, so I'm on Hoyle Street. This is Hoyle Street here, this, uh, this archway. Now, there's an old photograph of Hoyle Street that I'm going to relay, uh, going to relay over the top now and it was taken around, around here maybe. And as you can see, not much has changed. It's, it's still pretty much the old Manchester and it hasn't changed since that photograph. And that was taken um, and put into the, the papers type thing back then. Now, I'm going to take you back to 1905 when this murder happened and it was dubbed Manchester's Jack the Ripper murder case. It sent shockwaves around Manchester and, and sort of put a lot of fear and terror into people. Now, there was a man by the name of David Shields and he was, um, he was collecting rags. So I can only presume he was like a rag and bowl man. He was collecting rags obviously for, for money. And it says through Hoyle Street here there was an abandoned house. Now. What happened was David went into this house. I can only presume he was looking for some sort of, um, maybe just having a bit of a nosy around it, to be honest. And he stumbled across a 15 year old boy. He was called Thomas Wood. Now, he was, he was black and blue. He'd been badly beaten and he was tired, he was dead. And uh, he found him with a stuffed, uh, stuffed paper in his mouth and he had a red handkerchief wrapped around him wrapped around his uh, mouth to keep the paper in place. Now, this happened actually on this street here, Hoyle Street, and um, it was dubbed the Manchester Ripper, the Manchester Ripper case. It was absolutely horrific and gruesome. Now, he was never caught, so this guy was knocking about these streets with that evil intention, and he was never caught. How, how bizarre is that? Now, two years later, a similar incident happened and it must have been the same guy. Another another guy went into an abandoned house, uh, and it was but it was on the Ancoats area, and he found uh, a 15 year old boy again, and he was badly beaten, he was bound, he was gagged with paper, and he had the red handkerchief wrapped around his mouth. Now it must have been the same guy, and it's just so bizarre, I mean, it happened here, where I am now. Do you know what I mean? Like, this hasn't changed the face of this place. This hasn't changed. It's absolutely, probably like the oldest part of Manchester. And to think that there was an horrific murder and this guy had never been caught, got away with it, is truly horrific. The people of the area were living in terror and they were horrified by it. So it, it sent absolute shockwaves through Manchester. And to think it happened where I am, I mean, these walls here, do you know what I mean? Like these are the old tiled walls and then it goes like into the, the brown one. Do you know what I mean? Like it's soaked in the atmosphere of, of that actual era and it's still here to touch today, to touch and to feel and to know that it happened here and it hadn't changed. It's almost like we're stepping back in time already. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I feel so bad for the, the victims and the fact that justice was never given to this beast that was knocking about and 
he was walking the same the same sort of steps that I'm taking now. And to do an evil deed like that and get away with it was truly horrific. You know what I mean? How's he got away with this? And who was it? He took that to his grave with him and he was never caught. And it all took place here. And it's horrible. It's gruesome. But it's another story of Manchester that it stained Manchester's history. Do you know what I mean? It's ingrained in the history of Manchester and it happened right here. And as you can see, this is Hoyle Street. But if you take a look here, the little, uh, so old. I'll just run you over here. Look at these old archways here. This isn't like where the Piccadilly train station and, and all the Piccadilly lines go. But look at this. This is the River Medlock here. And if you look over here, about dropping the phone in the water, you know what I mean? I don't want any of that to happen, but look at that. This is ancient, it's actually like the walkway. It goes right under that tunnel. Right, so I'm just heading over now to the second uh, part of the story, the second location. And even though the, it didn't happen where I'm gonna take you, it happened not too far from where, where it is. Now, this place in Manchester is a hidden little gem and it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably my, my favorite part of Manchester. And the reason that I'm filming it here is because it's gonna be a good reference point and uh, sort of build up a bit of a picture of what it actually looked like back in, back in the day. So, without further ado, let's head over to Anita Street. So you've got the hustle and bustle of Manchester and you've got this little oasis in the middle. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is hands down my favourite part of Manchester. Just sort of this untouched 1930s, 1940s street. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm going to take you back now to 1828. And there was a little boy playing on the streets of Ancoats. <laughs> he was approached by this hag, this really old woman, described of having this like gown on, this tattered old gown. She had these big protruding teeth. Like really, on the description, it says she was like a hag. She paid this little boy, it says um, two sixpence online, and I think, don't quote me on it, because you know I'm not from that era, but I think it was works out about five quid, to go and deliver this cake. Now she had this big cake in her hand, this luxurious, delicious looking cake. It was absolutely mouth watering apparently. And uh, she paid him to go and deliver it to a, a bloke called Mr Drummond. So when the boy quickly took the cake and ran to the end of the street, he then knocked on the door of Mr Drummond and his wife answered and she refused the cake. She went, I don't want it. No, no, no. So the no. little boy ran back home with this cake and the money and said to his mum, I've got a cake. Mom, and his mum has like whip, literally like whipped it off him. She divided the cake up and shared it with her family. And she actually knocked on next door and gave them a piece of the cake. Yeah, you can have that. And after the first bite, they all hit the deck. <laughs> they were screaming, saying that the throat were burning, the stomach was on fire, and sadly one of the children died. Now, when they've um, actually done like a post mortem on the little boy. They said that it was laced, absolutely laced with arsenic, and she had ill intentions. This sinister old hag. Boom, boom. She had to uh, kill Mr. Drummond for what I don't know. She was never seen. She'd been never. Um, the boy had never seen her before, and Mr. Drummond and the family didn't know who she were. And she was never seen again. And she sort of disappeared into the back streets of Ancoats. Now. It's quite a chilling story because to think somebody's gone out of the way and tried to poison somebody and disguise it as a bit of an illusion in a, in a cake is you've got to be pretty wicked and pretty twisted to do something like that. And that's the story of it now. I said to you before that this has got nothing to do with this street, uh, with these streets here where I'm filming, but it sort of gives you that step back in time. And you can sort of imagine like the little boy running from one house to the other and uh, builds a bit more of a picture for us. So they were the two tales, the two stories that stained Manchester and they'll be forever ingrained in its history. 
so thank you for watching the video i'm going to wrap it up here just two little wicked stories thank you for watching and i'll see you next time cheers and the great difference between the really dangerous man and the loud man is the dangerous man has a great silence about him i'm known in the business as the whispering giant but my eyes are quite hard you see don't blink, blink, blink.